Hey everyone. Um, as you will figure out uh, from uh, my colleagues Alexis, uh, who she's next on the line for the talk, uh, and she did some also work into integrating um, accessibility into Grafana CI. Um, it's even here Grafana we're trying to address uh, accessibility both in a standard way but also try to figure out new and uh, innovative ways to make uh, software even more accessible. So today I will be talking about um, a project that me and a colleague of mine, uh, David Carlsmith, uh, did during a, an internal hackathon. Uh, and it started as an attempt uh, to make data accessible uh, using uh, unification techniques. So, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Kostas. Uh, I'm based in Athens, Greece, and I'm software engineer for the uh, cloud frontend team. And uh, for the past uh, six months uh, or five months, and I have been writing mostly uh, JavaScript. So, uh, before we begin anything, keep in mind that this uh, is still uh, in a highly experimental state as we still gathering feedback uh, and we are sensing the, the the, the field, uh, it's not it's not merged yet into the uh, main branch, and we are looking forward for your feedback. And I will have some uh, ways that you can communicate with us and share your uh, share your uh, opinions onto uh, the issue um, towards the end of the presentation. So um, the idea about the idea uh, of the project itself. So I was having a one-on-one -on -one with my manager, uh, Muriel Kant, and uh, she shared with me an article uh, about uh, a visually impaired astronomer called Wanda Diaz Merced, uh, which she employed sonification techniques in order to understand uh, uh, astrological spectra. So she also did like a really great uh, TED talk uh, in which she goes into more depth about her story. Uh, which I highly suggest uh, watching. So the process he was using was uh, converting aspects of data, such as the brightness or the frequency of electromagnetic radiation uh, into audible elements, including pitch, volume, and rhythm. So we were brainstorming, how could we apply this methodology into Grafana? And uh, in the time window of a week-long week -long hackathon, uh, we figured we could enhance uh, both our time series uh, and our uh, log stream alerting in which I will get into more depth. Uh, about the time series, so for you, for those of you who don't know, the time series is actually a, a type of, of um, a type of a plot in Grafana, a type of a panel actually in Grafana, uh, which consists of two axes. On the x-axis, you have the timeline, uh, which are like, uh, timestamps and on the y axis you have your values. So the idea for us was that we want to play different pieces of sound uh, based on uh, the value itself. So for example, the higher the, and more specifically, the higher the value, the higher the pitch. So in this case, so if you had this point, this would be a high pitch note. If you had this one, this would be a lower pitch note and this would be like a medium one. So there is a problem with that and with real time data. Um, uh, in essence, that we don't know what the limits of our data will be. So we cannot predict what sort of values we will get in the future. So, and that becomes a problem because uh, when mapping uh, values into uh, sound frequencies, we have the constraint of the human hearing, which is between uh, 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. So we have, and that's with real time, with real -time data. So we have, uh, uh, a set that we don't know its limits and we have a limited amount of set that we want to map into. So what we do instead is sonify just a snapshot of the data in which we know both the minimum and the maximum value. And so we can uh, map uh, values uh, directly into it. But what kind of frequencies should we use is the question. So, let me, okay. So in music theory, there are some frequencies that sound a bit more harmonic or a bit nicer if you want if you want than others and um, in most musical instruments uh, these frequencies are baked into the construction of the instrument itself so if you take piano for example uh, the piano is separated into uh, 
equal intervals called octaves. And each octave consists of 12 nodes. So, and each of these nodes is assigned to a unique and specific frequency. And the notation that we use for this, uh, for this, uh, uh, for this node system is we assign the node. So for example, if we take, if we take E on the fourth octave, we say that it, this is the E4. And this has uh, a frequency of uh, 329.63 Hertz. Uh, a4 in the same fashion has 440 Hertz and D6 has 1,174.66 Hertz. So now how do we go, go from data into music or music notes? So let's take for example, this really simple uh, time series and we have the corresponding, the corresponding data frame. So, and we also have the frequencies like the nice frequencies, as we said, which are more harmonic, and we want to map our data into these frequencies. So I think that's about right, correct? So, but there is a problem. The data that we have uh, are, are linear in terms of the, the set of the real numbers is linear, but the, the frequencies of the nodes um, increase uh, in an exponential factor. So when trying to map from one set to the other, we actually don't get a uniform mapping if we do like a linear mapping. So what we can do instead, instead of mapping directly into frequencies, uh, we can assign nodes, the ones that we explained before, like let's say A5 is index zero, A sharp five is index one, B5 is index two and so on and so forth. And this data set of index is linear in fashion. So we can map, from the data that we have, we can do a linear mapping into the index uh, data frame and then use the formula that we calculate the frequencies and we map into actual, um, into actual nodes. So about the interface and the uh, picture itself, uh, we wanted to keep, try to keep things uh, as simple as possible by adding a, a single button onto the panel menu, panel menu uh, which is also accessible with um, a keyboard shortcut. And we also added uh, some uh, configuration options uh, on the top right bar. And uh, when the user initiates the, uh, the sonification process, as we, as we call it internally, um, the browser's text speeds will announce uh, the name of the series, the minimum value, the maximum value, and the average, so that the user has an idea about what they're about to listen to. Uh, in order to keep the duration of the sonification within a reasonable amount of time, um, for large data sets, uh, we use sampling. Uh, we have two or three different strategies of sampling. Um, and also, uh, currently, we are working on to adding a, an active point marker in terms of having a visual indicator of uh, which node is currently, uh, which data point is currently being sonified uh, for debugging purposes. So um, now let's have a quick pre recorded demo of the picture. Series one, minimum 10.9, maximum 27.2, average 20.8. So, oh, oops. Uh, so this data frame uh, had really high resolution, but um, we just used the sampling to get like specific notes uh, out of it. And uh, uh, that was it. So where do we go from here? Um, we're looking into adding uh, more configuration options. Um, and we actually had uh, a meeting with, uh, we already had a meeting with a visually uh, impaired uh, engineer, uh, and he, he gave us some great insight on how to move forward. And um, so what we want to do is give the user more, uh, more granular configuration uh, onto this feature 
so such as controlling the length of the nodes or the sampling method or um, or even the kind of frequencies that they want to uh, uh, play from. Uh, we're also looking to add seeking capabilities, as in uh, moving uh, arbitrarily uh, between different data points, and optionally uh, that you can read out the uh, the values of the of this data point that you're inspecting for even more high resolution of uh, the data. Another axis that uh, we figured we can apply the sonification techniques uh, was into a stream of logs. And uh, Grafana already has uh, a panel type called logs, uh, which can be used to monitor uh, a log stream from a data source, from a data source such as uh, Loki. And uh, our idea was to have audio feedback uh, based on different log levels. So that means uh, provided um, a user a user provided threshold of uh, log levels. We could play different sounds uh, when a log line surpasses uh, that uh, that level, and um, in the similar fashion as we did with the time series, we use the same uh, pitch match pitch matching technique. Um, this is currently work in progress, so unfortunately I don't have a demo for you. Uh, but this is this is like uh, the idea. Um, and how we're planning on to moving forward with it is um, we're also working on to uh, giving the user uh, the option to identify different metrics apart from the log level. So for example, if you have a stream of let's say response times or like uh, IO or whatever you want, and uh, you want to parse directly from, from your uh, log stream, we will give you the option to, uh, to parse that and set up some rules and how you want to translate that uh, into sound. And also since this um, uh, this kind of feature with alerting is is not is not reliant on the on the on the, the, the sound progression itself, uh, we're looking to add the option to for the user to assign certain sound to certain alerts um, and have more uh, control into it. So that was it for me. And um, as I promised, uh, I'm looking. Really forward to hearing from you, and uh, we had we have an accessibility uh, channel set up in our uh, public Slack. Uh, we also have our community uh, community website that you can uh, pop any questions that you want to, and also you can uh, open an issue directly into GitHub. And uh, if you have any more questions, hit me in chat. Actually, I can check the chat right now. Okay. <laughs> I can check the chat for you. Okay. Um, there aren't many questions, but maybe people are still sort of like recovering from what you've just told, uh, which is fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd be super curious, would you, because you, you're, you're saying that you uh, can assign different sounds to different alerts, would you provide the library of those sounds uh, with this or would, could people import their own sounds? Um, importing the sounds is kind of tricky. Um, because they will need to be uploaded somewhere or like uh, in a local installation, you need to save them somewhere. So um, for now, we will just use sounds from even a maybe a library or uh, for, for the time being, we just use the, um, the basic instruments that uh, the web APIs provide us, which is uh, the sign, uh, square, square uh, triangle, uh, so tooth, and the uh, square. These are actually wavelengths and they have, um, so for example, the triangle, triangle wavelength is, like, is literally a triangle. The so tooth is like more steep and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's super but interesting. We're definitely looking into increasing the, into improving the, the sound library. Yeah, I'm just thinking the, the kind of anxiety I get whenever I hear Slack, a Slack notification, right? So there's certainly <laughs> sounds that, <laughs> that work better than other, other sounds, I guess, for, for people. Um, yeah. And we have a question from Daniel Paulus. Did you consider any other ways than music? Um, no, because in the beginning it was mostly, uh, as I said, the idea was from an article that we read about uh, the sonification of uh, 
astronomical spectra. So we were figuring out how we will apply this into Grafana and not the other way around. So uh, audio was the option because it was the, the idea from the beginning. Right. You mentioned in the beginning that uh, uh, nothing's merged yet, right? Uh, do you think yep. it will still be merged in this month and that people can work on it during Oktoberfest? <laughs> Um, I don't asking want to make for any a <laughs> I don't want to make any promises, but uh, I think for like in for the end of the quarter, maybe or even the next one. There are still a lot of things that we need to to work out, and uh, it's really experimental uh, issue. So yeah, but yeah, that makes it really interesting as well. Uh, awesome, Kostas, thank you for your talk. Um, Next up will be Alexa, and I believe that your talk actually sort of ties in, or your your both of your talks sort of tie into each other. Um, so that's a nice uh, that's not a nice switch. Uh, yeah, applause everyone! Thank you, Costa, so much for for talking and sharing this super cool project. <laughs>